Welcome back everyone to Ill Omen Skirmishes. We are back here in the Bree Skirmish Camp to speak with Netta Pinleaf again. And today we're going to have another set of skirmishes where the Harbingers of Ill Omen are invading. Now I have had a three days so far so I'm expecting the Wilderness set today. But I don't know if it's random or if it's a pure sequence that they're doing. Treacherous Wilds. I presume then that they must be doing it in a round robin circle, which is good because I feel a lot of people would have trouble if they just randomly placed them. Mind I speak with you a moment? We have a bad history with random settings of quests. Ah yes, Pineleaf. I've heard tell that the Harbingers of the Dead have spotted among the wilder lands of Middle Earth do what you can, and I'll handle the rest. <clears throat> yeah, I'm sure you will. And now that means Storm on Methodus, Ford of Bruinen, the Icy Crevasse, Attack at Dawn, and Barrow Downs. Now, Survival Barrow Downs is not soloable, which means that I'm going to have to do it from amongst the other Oh boy, I get to do Icy Crevasse today. But I think I'm going to start out with... How about Attack at Dawn? It's appropriate because it's... Starting to get near Dawn here. Not quite yet. I've learned a bit more about the Harbingers and their patterns since the last episode. That the Harbingers... They always appear at the same time and location within a skirmish. So that once you've done a skirmish with the Harbingers and they have appeared, then you'll know when to expect them the next time you do that particular skirmish during the event. The second one is that the Harbingers will appear if they're part of the selected group for that day. Regardless of whether or not you have any special quests or deeds open or anything like that related to the event. So anyone running Attack at Dawn today is going to be running into these guys. Even if they don't have any of the quests related to it. So that's something to keep in mind if you're running skirmish, because if you want to avoid the Harbingers, then it's probably a good idea to avoid those skirmishes on that day. So you might just want to know which skirmishes are active just to avoid them. And if you are seeking these, the Harbingers, then you know which ones to seek out. All right, let's go. Well, I guess we might as well just. Grab the entire group. Oh boy, those goblins are doing all sorts of nasty things. Poor Flax there, shooting a bow right in the middle of all the, of this scrum that we have here. All right, well, dead goblins. That's what they like. Well, and Uruks. Now, I'm guessing that the Harbinger is going to be near the end because the Harbinger seem to like the end of skirmishes. It's just what they love. So that's what we're going to have to deal with at the moment then is to get through the early parts of it, then eventually I'm going to get to a place where we unite at the top and I believe when we get there I'm going to get that blue message that says a harbinger has arrived. I'm taking the central flag now and this is the earliest point where I suspect that the harbinger may arrive and we have to wait for these guys but I've, actually if it were going to arrive right now I think I would have gotten the message already because they tend to arrive when you take control points 
rather than as a result of the counterattacks or anything else. Now, of course, that's when I'm talking about the offensive skirmishes. In the defensive skirmishes, it seems to be keyed on completing assaults. Now, I don't know what it's going to be like for survival barrel downs. Because there, if it doesn't happen early, then there'll be a lot of groups who will never be able to complete this during that time. I'm going to have to do some sort of experiment on that. It's just that hmm, doing survival barrel down solo on level is not exactly something that's well, good for your health. That's for sure. Of course, doing survival barrel downs is at a time... Really? Survival barrel downs isn't exactly one that you're expected to get all the way through anyway. That's why I say get there early because first off, you really, if it came late, even if you'd managed to get through the entire hour, do you really want to run a one hour skirmish for one little harbinger mob? I don't think so. The Thrill Battle Downs is a challenge, and the entire point of that is getting to the challenge. And we'll see those skirmishes. Is something designed to be on the quick side relatively compared to as many other types of instances. So their points are completely different on that matter. So having a late harbinger in survival barrel downs, I think, would be hmm, very not fun, and it'll certainly make it the least run skirmish in this event if it came late. Now, if it came early, that'd be fine. I'm thinking maybe it'll come in right at the five minute point. Oh, come on. Really? Setting up all that ambush and someone stuns me right all the way through it. Ah. Now, based on what I just said, that means the taking of... Oh. The taking of this flag is what I think is what's going to trigger... How many things do I have in here that can stun you or disarm you or anything like that? All of them, it sounds like. Usually I do a better job at pulling these things. It's the day of the bad pull, I guess. Alright, there you go. Somebody's left. Oh, wow, there's somebody I didn't pull in that dreadful mess. Somebody's missing. Yoo-hoo! Or did I forget? Oh! <laughs> yeah! Doing everything out of order. Okay. Well, we could... No harbinger there. So taking this flag here, then, is... Going to be. This is one of the few skirmishes where you could accidentally take a flag out of order. That down. Good thing the harbinger arrives after you destroy the catapults. It's really painful fighting in those catapults. And fighting a harbinger in such conditions, I'm sure, would not be fun. Ah, okay, there's the harbinger. Now, the question is where is the harbinger? I'm glad that's not it. Now, oh, if he's inside the boss room, <laughs> I'm not going to be happy. So my guess is that the harbinger will be down in the courtyard. That would be an, a reasonable place to put him. Usually I find that harbingers are forward. Oh, actually, I just found him. <laughs> Oh, that, that does not look like it's going to be a fun one. It looks like the white. Uh, 
this guy, let's see if this is who I think it's, this is, yeah, Hawthorne the Clothin, oh yeah. This is one of the more tedious harbingers in my opinion. I'm going to eat up for this. This particular harbinger is... Alright, he has this add, the Skeletal White. Of course, all harbingers that I can think of have have an add in there. But this one has a second add that will come in during the fight. Because you notice his left arm is missing. Well, the left arm will arrive a bit belated, shall we say. And he has this really nasty fear. And this fear effect is what makes him so tedious. I'm not sure yet what triggers the arrival of the arm, but the arm will arrive at some point in all this. Ah, and speaking of arms. Well, okay, the, the arm will fight Flax for now. And that's all well and good because if it's fighting Flax, it's not fighting me. So I'm sure that at some point... See it. And that's what happens is you have this, and if you're playing this solo, you're almost guaranteed to be constantly in fear. Now, I did face this one in a small fellowship recently. And in that one... I didn't get feared all that often. I only got feared about two or three times. I guess because it was going between two or three of them or something like this. See, now this time, you see the arm was inducting. And so it was the arm that sent me running. So you've got these things and... Oh, come on. Ah! So that's what happens. So if either of them gets that induction off... Which is really, really annoying. Okay, that time I got it off the... Uh. And that time I managed to get my boot off, but it must have been on cooldown on being able to do an interrupt. <sighs> so, yeah. I would say this is the definitely the most annoying of all the harbingers. There's no way I'm going to stop that because I'm in the middle of a different gambit. Uh, and I haven't been able to get off a single decent heal off either as a result of this. Alright. Oh, that, that was my interrupt. Oh well. He's resistant to being interrupted. That's bad. Really bad. I don't like this guy. Let's see if I c can just plow through him. Get that off. Okay. Run run more time. This is a very bad boss to have to fight solo. Okay, he's down, and he goes down right afterwards. Okay, good. Oh yeah, Flax went down too, of course. Well, the idea is that one goes down, and the other one dies soon afterwards, I guess, as soon as it gets the message. Wow. That is... Pr I'll put that down as the most annoying of the Harbingers. The toughest one is one of the is the warg I actually faced in the last episode, the one that we faced when we were doing. Let's see, what was that? Oh yeah, rescue nurse got shoe. All right, uh, let's go and take care of this guy. At least this part should be easy after that. Uh, 
you're, you're not going to there you go oh come on stop that well if I got no spear at least I can kill the goblin Ugh. well this is not bad as what that stupid arm and white does to you here you just have goblins throwing pots of fire on you. Well, he's going down, so I'm not going to worry about the goblin. All right, good, done, and we are out of here. This is the fourth day of the event, and. I've got 30 of uh, 50 tokens of ill omen. Now I need 40 in order to get any of the items being bartered by Netta. And there is a cap of 50. Therefore, I am going to have to get something pretty quickly upon getting past the 40 mark on there. Now, let's go for the next skirmish and see what kind of boss is there. And hopefully, when I come back in, it'll be just as we get a new Harbinger. And I hope it's not going to be anything nearly as annoying as the one we just fought. Here we are at Stormwell Methodist at the second control point. This sounds like a good place to have a Harbinger. Of course, the other place it may have it. Well, okay, this is where I was afraid they were might have it at the hut or something like that. Fortunately, that is not the case. Of course, the question is where that harbinger is. Maybe behind us. I can't think of any convenient place where they could hide a harbinger in front of us. So that may leave behind us as the most logical place to have it. Even though most of them tend to have them in the back. Let's see. I don't see a harbinger anywhere in that direction. So maybe it is off to the side because everywhere else on the side, though, tends to have a harbinger that is. Oh, let me get this shadow grip off of me. Yeah. Yeah. Because because the places that are off to the side, they can be particularly dangerous to have a harbinger at. Now, I don't want to leave the area just yet because we do have the rangers to worry about. But we will find that harbinger as soon as I take care of our friends here and... We should be getting the encounter soon. Oh, wonderful cower. Wonderful. A nice, annoying encounter. Though not nearly as annoying as that arm encounter with the white. And there we are. I guess that sounded like the most likely place. Closest to Orthak. It sounds like a perfect place for something like that. Lower girth. Death well. Hmm. It's a dark water spirit. Hmm. I haven't seen this one yet. All right. And he's got a creeping arm with him. Oh, wonderful. I'm not too sure I like ones that have creeping arms in them. They remind me too much of the one that we just have. Yeah. Get rid of creeping arms no matter what. I don't... Well, of course, this one is a greenie instead of an elite. So it obviously means it's not one of those I have an extra arm to annoy you with type encounters. All right, now let's take care of this dark water spirit here. Now I don't know what this thing likes to do to you. Because they all have some sort of shtick that gets to be an annoyance. I haven't seen one on this one yet. I'm sure it has something to do with this induction. Oh, well, okay. That's no more than the usual annoyance that you get with these things. It 
So far, it's been rather tame for a Harbinger, which is actually probably just as well. Now, I think that each Gurmish seems to be having a pool of of Harbingers that it has, so that there is those several skirmishes seem to share the same ones. I haven't got the full pattern yet. Just silver, which is typical. I have gotten loot boxes out of them, and I actually once got a token of for the last zone for the that you get for working with the Jaruka, which is rather weird considering that that character I think was something like out in Wilder questing in Wildermore at level, so what's a character out in Rohan getting tokens for dwarves? I've got no idea. But the point is, they can drop things other than silver, so nothing particularly impressive. Hey, this guy is more annoying than the Harbinger. Whee! Yeah. <sighs> Having a tossing match with a beast. The third control point seems to be the most likely place in this skirmish for us to run to a harbinger. Let's see if we could... Uh, yep, a harbinger of the dead has arrived. But where in this skirmish can you put a harbinger without creating... Too many troubles. Hmm. They seem to like to choose locations that are the least likely to interfere with the counterattack and with other encounters. Though, I think in some skirmishes, such as Assault and Ring Raid's Lair, they were a little bit off on their calculations. But. This seems to be a place that, well, if it does interfere with it, at least it's unlikely to that you have to be standing right on top of it. Now, but this guy does, well, he has a shadow aura, but outside of that, I'm not... Ouch, this, this acid is a real pain. Can I see if I could draw him to the... Vent. Yeah, let's bring him to the vent. And hopefully, this doesn't backfire on me because, oh, well he, he does like to have pools of acid going around. Since I'm healing mode right now, I better stand in the vent myself. There you go. And now into the damage area. Yay! How about that? Actually using the skirmish terrain to my advantage. That's a switch. But he is a tough one. But I think the only reason I'm getting through him down, him down this fast is because this is at maximum damage in Nicey Crevasse. So a lot of damage is being done here. And he killed my soldier. How rude. Another two tokens. And another... However much money that was. 197 silver. Here in Fort Embruinen, the Harminger appeared at the end of the second assault. Unfortunately, I never saw where it actually appeared at. I don't think it's there because that's where the worm appears. And I've seen absolutely no sign whatsoever of the Harbinger since then. And you would think that I would have noticed it somewhere, right? But it's not around. And up here, there's an encounter that appears up here also. So that would have been a poor place for it. Now, this is a place that I often come during the boss fight, and... Nope. 
no sign there, and there's an encounter that sends you towards the archers. So that seems like an unlikely place. Where do they appear? Oh! Tucked way out in this corner. I suppose that is as out of the way spot as you could find. Mothos, the unmourned. Oh, fun. And I presume that's a white with them? Yes, a moldering white. I wonder what this guy does. <sighs> well, we are about to find out. But I'm fighting this one after the... I'm fighting this one after the skirmish is over. What that means is that I will get my two... Whatever those things are called those two points on the currency because you do get those you also advance the quest so that that can finish up but what you don't get is credit for the harbinger kills there is a deed currently it's at level cap but it's supposed to work if you're at any level and running skirmish within five levels of it. And so that's a little bit off right now. Hopefully they'll get that fixed soon. But it will not count for that kill 60 harbingers. Now, you can run any skirmish with a harbinger even if you don't have the quest and get credit for that deed. It's just that if you kill the boss after the skirmish is over you don't get credit for the deed but you get credit for the deed but not for getting the two tokens if you running a skirmish that's not currently on your quest list even though it's on the harbinger list so those are a couple things to keep in mind and now I need to speak with Netta Pinleaf and done I can do for you. Very good, Pineleaf. That ought to keep them away from those folk for a bit. I think she always says the same thing there, and that gives me two more tokens. And I think that's getting me pretty close in there. 38 of 50. Two more tokens needed. And I have to wait for tomorrow before I get those. Oh, well. But that's all for... Oh, that's right. There is survival barrel downs. I suppose I'm going to have to run that one. I don't need it for a quest credit. And there's no way I'm going to survive that entire skirmish. And I just wore my cold stuff after Icy Crevasse was over. Ooh, I must be getting hot in this. But I'm going to try Survival Brow Downs way under level. And see if I can at least find out when that Harbinger appears. We're coming to the five minute point. Maybe we can get a Harbinger here as early as possible. Well, theoretically, I have two and a half, but I figure they want to at least have it when there's a lieutenant around. Well, there's the five minute point. Completed phase. Oh, yep, yeah, there is the Harbinger right there. Krishnash. Oh, and there's no way to avoid them either, it looks like. So one of those rare times you can't avoid the Harbinger. Oh, he's got these crawlers with him. It's going to be here back in the bright sunshine away from the Barrel Downs. And that concludes today's episode where we went through some of the more treacherous areas to take them. And probably the toughest areas in order to take a group run for these particular areas. We've got Survival Barrel Downs. Unfortunately, you only have to get through five minutes of this before you get the Harbinger. Because once you get the Harbinger killed, you don't have to worry about the rest of the skirmish in order to get credit for the Harbinger quest daily that you are on. But you also have the Icy Crevasse, a tough 
group one always. You've got the Ford of Bruinen, where you have the twins that have ruined many a group run. Fortunately, that's an early one, so if you want to optimize the the battle against the Harbinger, I presume you just go after the Harbinger and just have enough people to keep the twins safe while you're running in a larger group if you are mainly worried about the Harbingers for that one. And you can ignore the Harbinger if you're mainly worried about the main skirmish itself. Then we have Attack at Dawn and Storm on Methodist, which are two that should be a lot more doable within the groups. But you've got three tough ones from my point of view in groups of Ford, Icy, and survival barrel downs in this particular one. So it's one of the trickier ones to run. So if you want credit for this one and you're running solo, obviously drop survival barrel downs unless you could think you could survive for five minutes and then face a harbinger. Or you can go in a group, maybe try survival and see if you could get through that one. And that way, if you have trouble with either Icy or with a Ford in getting through there, you'll be able to drop the one your group has more trouble with. But either way, it sounds like a little bit of a challenge that's up ahead in there. Now, while this course summarizes it from my point of view of going through all four of them, I have not yet shown the other two areas, the ones in the strongholds or the ones that are in Mirkwood. I'm going to show you them later on there and at least there I'll have a little bit more knowledge of what's going on because I would have done them already. But that's it for today's episode and this is Pineleaf Needles reminding you to skirmish responsibly. <laughs>